Good evening and welcome to my home. As today is Veterans Day, I wanted to say a special thank you to all the veterans who have served our country so faithfully. We thank you that we have the freedom to worship and the freedom to minister and go to church because of the sacrifices not only that you have made, but your families have made. As a military daughter who moved from coast to coast, I understand the sacrifices made when your loved one is far away from home. But I know that God sustains us during those times. So I just wanted to thank you and bless you all for your service. Let's get started tonight. Father God, I thank you for the time that we have together. I thank you, Father, for the word that you have given me to minister tonight. I'm thankful, Father, that as we look in your word, the truth and the power is going to come forth in a mighty way. I thank you that as we hear the word, it's going to come in and change our lives and bring us closer to you. Father, I just bless each one listening, their families, their cities, their states, their countries. Father, there you are worldwide and we can all, even though we may speak different languages, we can receive from you in the manner that you give us through the Holy Spirit. We just thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I, as I spoke, I do come from a military family and one year, about seven or eight years ago, I did a poster of our family tree and the number of military people in my family that have served. And it was, at that time, it was 30-something people out of my one family line. My father's mother was a Gold Star mother. She had all four of her sons serving in Korea in different branches of the service at the same time. So I know what it's like to be a veteran and to experience some of the loss that you have because of time that you weren't able to spend with your families and, and some of the strengths that you have because you were able to see God strengthen you to endure. I have a couple things I want to read to you that I um, was looking up and, and uh, the Lord was speaking to me about it. First of all, a veteran is a person who has served in the military, naval or air service, who was discharged or released therefrom, uh, uh, therefrom on any condition other than dishonorable. So any person who has served in the military service um, that was that served for might have been four years, might have been two years, might have been eight years, might have been a lifetime. My father served 33 years in the Navy. Those all make you a veteran. And the Lord started speaking to me, not only are these people who serve veterans, but their families are veterans. Because their families go through the same not the same dangers and everything, but still the same process of being left behind and, and have to be strengthened to go through. And in all of those things, we can call out to the Lord and He will strengthen us. We hear a lot about those uh, foxhole confessions of people who have been in battle and how they may not have even believed in God before they went to war but when it came down to life and death they were calling out to Jesus because he is the only one true one that can save them. It won't be from the physical pains or death of this earth but it'll be eternal life that they'll gain. Amen. And I wanted to talk to you that the title of this message is going to be Sacrifice is a Way of Life. I looked up the word sacrifice and it's the act of giving something up that you want to keep, especially in order to get or to do something else or to help someone. An act of killing a person or animal in a religious ceremony as an offering to please a God. A person or animal 
that is killed in a sacrificial service. I, when I was thinking about this lesson, I went online and I looked up the oath um, of a serviceman when they are sworn uh, to protect this country. And I wanted to read it to you because there's parts of it that are very important for all of our lives today. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign or domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to the regulation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Can you believe in this day and time that those last four words are still spoken every time a serviceman or woman is um, charged with the duty to protect our country? So help me God. It is only with God's wisdom, His strength, and His power that we are able to fulfill any assignment that we have been given. We are unable to do it on our own. There's too many forces in this world that try and hold us back, to keep us quiet, to separate us. The division in this country at this time is horrendous. But God is the reconciler. And He's not only going to bring us all together, but we're going to be stronger together because he, His love that covers us covers all of us and will gather us together. Amen? I want to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 13 and 14, and I'm reading them out of the Passion Translation. Under the old covenant of the blood of bulls, goats, and the ashes of a heifer, were sprinkled on those who were defiled and effectively cleansed them outwardly from their ceremonial impurities. Yet how much more will the sacred blood of the Messiah thoroughly cleanse our consciousness? For by the power of the eternal spirit, he has offered himself to God as the perfect sacrifice that now frees us from the dead works to worship and serve the living God. Amen. We are so blessed that Jesus became the eternal sacrifice for us. You know, we talked about Job in the past weeks and that he sacrificed for his children because Continually, the Bible says, because he was afraid that they had sinned or they have offended God or they failed to do something. And so he would sacrifice goats or bulls or, or whatever continually to make sure that his children were covered. But all those sacrifices did was cover their personal bodies. They did not cover their souls or their spirits. They did not have eternal life. They only had a relief from one thing to the next thing. As the Bible said, it was continuously he gave these offerings for his children on behalf of his children. You know, we today sometimes we think that we're doing the best that we can do for our children. We give up, give in, go along with everybody else because we think it's the thing to do to cover our children. But God knows what's best for each one of them. So we need to trust the Holy Spirit inside of us to give us wisdom and direction as we lead and guide our children. Amen. The second scripture I want to take you to is also in Hebrews. Chapter 9, verses 27 through 28. And this is also in the Passion Translation. Every human being is appointed to die once and then to face God's judgment. 
But when we die, we will be face to face with Christ, the one who experienced death once for all to bear the sins of many. And now to those who eagerly await him, he will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to bring us the fullness of salvation. You know, this is every one of us, every human being on the face of this earth is going to die. Our natural bodies are not meant to last forever. And if the Lord doesn't come back soon, we're all going to have the time where death is going to take over our bodies. But to know that the eternal life that he, Jesus, died to give us not only gives us strength to live the life that we're in, but ensures us that when he comes back, we're not going to be judged. He's just going to bring us into a closer union with him. Once we don't have this flesh and once we don't have the sin nature that we have, then we can be closer to Jesus. There's no other way that we can be close to him. On our own, we cannot make ourselves stop sinning. We come into a place as we grow and walk with him that his desires are our desires. And when we desire what he wants for our lives, then the things of our past and the things that we have laid aside become unimportant to us. That he gives us a new mind. He gives us a new nature. As we walk with him, we become more like him. You know, as children, you can see children and um, as they mimic a parent, uh, the way a parent walks or the way a parent talks or even worships and prays. You can see little children with their hands raised and, and just pressing into the Lord. As we do that, as we learn to get close to Him, we mimic Him. We want to be more like Him because He's always looking to His Father. Whatever He saw His Father do is what He did. And we want to be the same way. We want to follow Him so we can be pleasing to our Heavenly Father. Amen. The next scripture I have is from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 13. For the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for our friends. Many men and women that have served in our armed forces have paid the ultimate sacrifice. They sacrifice their life. We may not be called to sacrifice our life on a day-to-day -day basis, but we are called to lay our life down and pick up the life of Jesus Christ and to walk through that every day. It's the only power and the only strength that's going to fulfill our lives and give us purpose for our life. We just... Love him because he first loved us. We learn that as a child, Jesus loves me. Well, yes, he did when you were formed in your mother's womb, when you were a child, as you grew, grow into an adult and mature. He still loves you the same as he did before you were formed in your mother's womb. That never changes. But we learn to walk in that love. And as we walk in that love, we grow with greater intensity into the person that he wants us to be, into one that he can use to reach out to others. Amen. The greatest sacrifice. Matthew 26, that verse 39. Then he walked a short distance away, and overcome with grief, he threw himself down on the ground and prayed, My father, 
If there is any way you can deliver me from this suffering, please take it from me. Yet what I want is not important, for I only desire to fulfill your plan for me. Then an angel from heaven appeared to strengthen him. And as I was thinking about this word, this verse, we have different kind of deaths in our life. There's physical death. There is a death of our wills where we lay our wills aside and we let God decide and to rule over our lives. And this will is a will that I believe is, is what's written in this verse. Because Jesus, even though he knew what he was facing, he knew everything he would face. He knew the pain that was going to be inflicted on him, the agony that he would suffer. He knew that there would be a point when his father would have to turn away from him because he wouldn't be able to look at the sin that he had taken upon himself. For every curse broken, for every disease, for every sickness, for every pain that could possibly be borne by men and women back then and still today. He took all of that on him. He knew what was going to happen when he was in the garden that night. And he said, Father, if there's another way, take this suffering away from me. But your will will be done. His desire was to do the will of his Father, not to get out of anything happening to him. You know, the, the Word tells us that 10,000 angels could have come to rescue him, but the Father didn't send him because this sacrifice was necessary. And it was the only sacrifice that would ever serve to unite mankind with the Father who desired relationship with them. And as I read this verse, when Jesus said, not what I want, but what you want, when he fully surrendered his will to his Father, then the Father sent an angel to minister to him. Just as today, when we fully surrender our wills to God, he's going to send us help. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to build us up. That's his promise. He doesn't want us to go through these things alone. He wants us to know that he is an ever-present help in time of need. The Word tells us. We need to hold on to that and to know when we say, Lord, what you want for my life is what I want. Help me to walk the path that you prepared for me. Help me to lean not on my understanding, but help me to receive and walk in what you have. Then he's going to send us that help. He's not leaving us alone to figure it out for ourselves. Amen. I was thinking about the sacrifices of today. We sacrifice time. You know, time is one of the most Im important things that we have today. We all have 24 hours, but some days we seem to accomplish so much more in those 24 hours than we do on other days. Our time and the activities that we choose to invest our time in matter to the Lord. When we start out. Sometimes it's easy to spend a lot of time in the Word and, you know, because you're all excited. And then, as I call it, real life takes over. And you have obligations here and obligations there, and you're trying to figure out 
how to get it all done. You've got this place to go and that place to go and you have to take kids here or kids there. You know, that's real life. But God will still redeem your time when we surrender our days to Him. I think that's why He put time in the first of my list because all of our time is precious to Him. So there's time that we just need to spend in His presence to set our day and to strengthen ourselves. Amen. The second thing is resources. You know, as we reach out in this world today, we all have more than we need. I've been in countries where You know, last year I was getting ready to go to Africa at this time. There are people there who truly have nothing, but they're happy because they don't know that they have to have things in order to be happy. We spend so much time working to buy things. And what does that do for us? We may have the things, we may give the things to others, but all that is temporary. You know, like children on Christmas morning, you know, you work hard and you, and you, you know, save and you buy these presents and put them under the Christmas tree and within 15 minutes they're tore open and most of them are forgotten. Things that are not eternal will not make a difference in your life. Having the newest and greatest will never satisfy you. It will never bring you joy. It will never bring you peace. I've learned that I can take from what I have and give to someone else if it's a book, if it's something that I have gathered or been given even in the past years and it meant something to me it can also mean something to somebody else. We can give to others out of the abundance of the resources that we have. You know, with Christmas time approaching, I know that there's a struggle to get, you know, to get the newest gift. And, and you know, in the past years when my children were little, I stood in line hours getting the thing that they wanted the most. But can I tell you the things that people really want the most is the time that you'll spend with them. Give them a gift of your time. You know, take them to a movie. Take them out to eat. Do baking. You know, there's so many things that we can do with people that will impact their life and make a memory that's much better than any gift that we can ever give. So our resources, we should allow the Lord to show us what we can do with them. Amen. The next thing I have is money, our finances. You know, it's good to have money, but as Paul says, I've, I've been in abundance and I've been in lack. Having money is not the whole goal of your life. But using, having money to use to be a blessing to the kingdom of God is what the purpose is. Does God want you to have money? Yes. God wants you to have money. He has no problem with you having money. Because if you have money and you listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you will sow that money into people and into places and into ministries that will make an eternal impact. So don't ever think that if you have money that it's ungodly because it certainly is not. And the word tells us that God allows money to flow through our hands. He will give more to those that he knows and he trusts to give it out to others. Isn't that true in our life? I have been given so many finances for my mission trips. That was such a blessing. You know, some of it may have been a dollar. 
but it was an intentional dollar. It was a dollar sewed into that ministry. And that same dollar was more than equal to someone who may have given a thousand dollars. It's not the amount of money. It's how you use it. Amen? The last one sacrifice of today is our wills. That's a hard one for us. We're still human. We still live in this fallen world. And we know how to do things. We know how we like things done. We know how we want things to happen in people's lives, especially the lives of our families and the life that we can speak into. But can I tell you that Jesus, knowing all that he knew, subjected his will to the Father. We spend so much time trying to solve things, trying to figure things out, asking why, 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 when God just says, trust me, submit your will to me, and I will strengthen you. I will send that angel, maybe in the form of a friend, maybe in the form of a stranger, but he will strengthen you when you fully submit your will to his. And you know, his plans are much better than ours. Just as Jesus knew what the sacrifice was going to end up meaning to us today, to our future, to our children's and grandchildren's future, just as he knew when he submitted his will on that cross, we, when we submit our will, then God is able to do and to bring forth what he needs to do in our life, through our life, in the life of our families. We can't be God. We can't outthink God, and he does not need our help. He just needs our submission. The sacrifice of our wills will enable him to bring greater than we can even imagine. The last verse I have for you today comes out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 15. And, you know, I as I read this verse, this is also in the Passion Translation. I want you to listen to these words because they were so powerful. They just hit me as I was reading this. So we no longer offer up a steady stream of blood sacrifices, but through Jesus, we will offer up to God a steady stream of praise sacrifices. These are the lambs that we offer from our lips that celebrate his name. Sacrifices of praise become a sacrifice to the Lord. That last part, these are the lambs, the sacrifices that we offer from our lips that celebrate His name. How appropriate that as we honor the sacrifices of veterans today, we honor the King of kings and the Lord of lords who made the greatest sacrifice for us. He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our wills, of our finances, of our resources, and our time. He has given us so much. Even these things are insignificant to us. But to him, they are so very precious. Father God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for this word, Father. I thank you that your word goes forth powerfully. That, Father, those who have felt 
like outcast, those who have felt unloved and unwanted, will be able to experience the redemption of the sacrifice of Jesus tonight. That His will given so that your will could come and be accomplished bought our freedom. The freedom of every man and woman, boy and girl on this earth. That, Father, there is freedom in surrendering our wills to you. We just thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for your forgiveness that's forever and ever and ever. We thank you that there's no judgment in you, that you love us, that you encourage us, that you bless us, that you desire for us to walk fully in the whole lives that you have planned for us. I thank you, Father, if there's anyone listening tonight that has not received you as Lord and Savior, that they will feel the peace in their heart that they have never known. They will feel their heart be made complete because you are placed in there. Father, I just thank you for just your, your presence of love that surrounds us. We love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Again, I, I want to thank all you veterans and your veteran families for your sacrifice for our country. We bless you. We ask God to bless you. And we ask God to bless America because he loves his country. And this country loves him. Have a wonderful week. God bless you and good night.